Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dexy Gaming, and the first of a series of videos on our channel aimed at brand new players. And the main reason for bringing this series of videos out is all over Reddit posts and forum posts, there's also people who play Last Epoch or Touch Diablo 4 Beta or play Diablo 3, and are keen on giving Path of Exile a try. So I thought I'd bring out a series of videos aimed at brand new players. If you've done a few leagues, this video probably not going to have much for you, but if you're a brand new player, I think there's going to be loads in here that's going to be helpful. And the first topic we're going to talk about is whether you should follow a build guide on your first playthrough. Now, this is something where you get differing opinions from different people. I'm just going to give my opinion on the topic. And let's just cut to the chase. I 100% recommend you should follow a build guide when you first play the game. Now, if you decide you just want to jump in blind and play your own build, go for it. There's obviously nothing wrong with that. But be aware the campaign, if you can even get through it on a thrown together build, is going to be sort of 12 to 15 hours, most likely for your first playthrough. And it might be you get to the five and six hour mark and you just can't progress with your character. And really the only option is to give up and start a new character and that can be frustrating. So we're going to go over the points why I think you should always follow a league starter for your first character. Firstly, it's a very, very complex game. Yes, it's an ARPG, but the depth in terms of difficulty is off the charts compared to things like Last Epoch and Diablo. And we'll go through that a bit in the video. You've got a mammoth skill tree that all classes share. You've got ascendancy points that each class has separate ones. You get support gems, curses, auras, a silly amount of unique and a lot of endgame content that when you first play the game, you're not really going to know what it is and how to approach it. Secondly, there is very little respec opportunity in Path of Exile. In games like Last Epoch and Diablo, respecing is super easy and super cheap. You could totally build your character wrong, get to like the end of the game, maybe act eight or nine in Last Epoch, realizing your build's not quite working, you've saved up a ton of gold, you can go and respec everything, and then you can carry on with the build that you've decided to change to. Same with Diablo, it's just a case of putting in a few different skills and maybe finding one unique item. In Path of Exile, the way respecs work is you get two in each act, and there's 10 acts, by doing side quests. So you're gonna get a total of 20 free respecs within the quests. You also can use what's called an Orb of Regret to respec, but they're quite rare in the campaign. Don't expect to find more than two or three in your entire playthrough, which means if you decide to build your own character and then you get to a point where you realize you've literally taken nearly every wrong node on the tree, or you need to totally path backwards to take some nodes you wanted to, if it's more than 20 points, you're kind of out of luck. You just can't do it. You either soldier on with your build, which if it's bricked, then it's going to be a really, really bad experience. Or your other option is just to reset and start again. And then maybe either follow a build guide or at least look at some similar builds. And it can be a frustrating experience. It happened to me. First two times I played the game, I decided just to throw any points into the tree, any skills, any links. And I didn't get past Act 3 or 4 in my first two playthroughs. And it actually made me give up the game for a good few years before I came back, followed a build guide, and that's what got me hooked. Now, these respec points become much more abundant later on, but you need a character that's going to be able to tackle maps and some of the endgame content to start getting the currency to drop or currency to buy those respec points that you might need. Thirdly, there's no class specific skills, gear, or skill tree. The only thing that are class specific are your ascendancy, which you do throughout the campaign. Everything else is shared. You just start in a different place on the skill tree. This can make it really complicated because for a start, you might pick a build that straight out the blocks isn't going to work. You might go, I want to do a elementalist because I really like witches and I want to do a physical bow based character because I think it will work really well together because it'll be good fun. And the build just will be very, very difficult to level and is very unlikely to get you out of the campaign. And it is a lot to take in path of it. So there are a silly amount of skills. There's probably like 60 active skill gems that you could use along with a very, very large amount of support gems. Knowing what goes together can be very difficult if you're trying to make your first character. You haven't planned it out and you're just doing it on the fly as you go along. Now picking the wrong gem links is not the end of the world because you can just buy more gems from the vendors. But if you've taken a specific tree aiming for a specific build that you've got in mind and it's just not working, then you come into problems. Expect 10 to 14 hours completion on your first play through the acts. You're going to be quite slow, especially if you decide to do your own build. You may really be slogging your way through the acts and it might take you an hour and a half to two hours to do one act because it's just very difficult to kill anything without dying. Even if you pick a build guide, don't expect to do the campaign in under 10 hours. I'm not saying you can't, but the average person is going to take minimum of 10 hours to get through the campaign, which is why I think it's worthwhile picking a build guide that looks good 
gets you through the campaign, gets you introduced to Endgame. Even if you then decide, I'm going to now level my own character, at least you know a bit more about the game and you've got this other character to fall back on if you need to farm currency to either respec or get specific gear for your second character. And lastly, there is lots of build diversity in Path of Exile. Now, yes, there might be only a handful of skills that are really, really easy to scale on minimum currency. But with the right investment, most skills can be viable, but that's once you're at endgame and you're farming currency. Some skills work way better than others as lead start skills, and knowing what those are is really important. So that's why picking a build can really help. Even if the build isn't a good lead start skill, the build guide will most likely show you how to level and what skills to use. And that again can be really handy because it gives you an idea of what you can do if you wanted to level the same class, but you maybe didn't want to level with the skill you're going to use. It gives you a good idea of what you can aim for. It's a fun game when you get a character that can do content. When you've got a character that can't and you're dying in maps or you're dying in the campaign, you can't clear anything. It isn't a very nice experience. And there is lots of fun content to be had, especially in a fresh league with a new league mechanic. Everyone wants to be doing that league mechanic, even if it's in the lowest tiers of maps but there are lots and lots and lots of builds that you would make yourself that would get nowhere near maps. They just wouldn't get through the campaign. An example being I tried to do just a random elementalist. I picked random skills. I took what I thought was a good skill tree on my first playthrough when I actually got through the campaign. And I think I died 50 times at Katava. I basically corpse rushed the bosses. And I think that's one thing about Path of Exxon. I don't think it's a good thing is that boss health doesn't reset when you die. So you can actually get through with pretty much any build whatsoever but as soon as you do that you get into end game which is maps you get six portals to complete a map which is six lives you lose them you're out your map's gone you have to do another one and if you die in 40 or 50 times to a boss in a campaign you're not going to make it very far through each of these maps so don't be of the mindset of oh it doesn't matter i can just die over and over again as long as i get to maps i can then start getting some currency getting some gear it's just not going to work the campaign is a very good measure to where you're going to be in maps i would say Act 10 is harder than maps, without a doubt. Some of the areas in Act 10 are more deadly. The bosses in Act 9 and 10 are definitely harder than the map bosses in the first few tiers of maps. So if you're comfortably getting through Acts 9 and 10, then you're more than ready for maps. If you're constantly dying to mobs or bosses, then you really need to look at your build because you're just going to have a bad time when you get to the end game. And lastly, it's not just getting through the campaign, putting a build together, getting some skills that work to clear the campaign. That's just the beginning of the game and a lot of people call it the tutorial, although a very long one. Where you're going to need the help is when you get to maps. You need to know what bit of gear to aim for next, where to get that gear. Is there a specific area you can farm that gear? If not, how can you get the currency together to start progressing your character? And as a new player, you're going to be very, very overwhelmed with the amount of stuff you get thrown at you when you finish the campaign. You're going to be introduced to no end of league mechanics. You're going to have maps to do. You're going to have an atlas skill tree. And again, at the skill tree, you've got to respec it with orbs and they're not very plentiful, especially if you're not clearing higher content. So again, it's really important that you pick the right nodes and you aim for the right content for your build to be able to progress it and enjoy more of the end game. Um, so that's kind of a summary. It's a very quick video, but I just wanted to give my opinion for new players on whether you should follow a build guide. Don't feel that if you follow a build guide, um, you're like a failure or anything stupid like that. It is much, much easier to follow a build guide and it's just as fun. And it isn't just a case like in Last Epoch where you get a fire skill, you then progress down the fire tree and you take all fire nodes, mana nodes, life nodes, and you're going to get through the campaign. Your build might not be the best thing in the world, but you're going to be able to complete quite a few of the early memories. And it might be like level 75, 80, you start to hit a bit of a wall and then you have to respect your character. But again, it's cheap to do it. In Path of Exile, you don't have the option. If you pick a build that doesn't synergize with your skill tree, you're a bit stuck. You literally just have to start your character again. That's it for this video. I hope it's helped some new players out. More guides to come for brand new players shortly. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.